It is Navy week in Savannah for the second time in history. The U.S. Navy has brought the celebration to Savannah. Rear Admiral David M. Buzetti joins us now with more on the event and its importance. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. Well, first of all, I just want to say that you have an ambitious itinerary because I saw all of the things that you've been doing all week. You've been in schools. You've been here at the television station. You've been working out. I mean, you still have events to go this coming yeah. week. And tell us what this week is all about and why it's so important. Yeah, so it, it, you, you are correct. It's a pretty aggressive schedule, and it started actually before I got here. Wow. We have teams on the ground, and they've been here all week long doing really great work, engaging with the community. Um, I came in on, on Wednesday and had the, uh, the puck drop event at the ice hockey game, and so that was a lot of fun. The significance of this for us is it, it's, our, it's our way to reach the community. Uh, to, to give a little bit of a sound bite on who we are, what we're about, and the, the types of opportunities that the Navy presents to the community. And not just the community, but to the children of our community as well. Yesterday you were in classrooms mm -hmm. talking to some of the students. What message do you hope that they walk away with? Yeah, so great. I was, I was asked earlier today, what, what, is, what have I enjoyed the most? And that engagement so far has been the best. I love to engage the youth. Uh, the message for them yesterday was uh, there, there's a wealth of opportunity and I think the Navy as a service and, and I would argue the nation as a whole needs leaders and it need, we need to invest and look at our, our younger population for our upcoming generation of leaders. It's significantly important. Now if you look behind the scenes in our studio right now, there are a bunch of people in here but you have even more people with you, what, between 50 and 75 sailors? Yeah, it's a, I don't know the exact number offhand, but it is, it is a number of people from all different types of communities, the Navy Band, Special Warfare, Navy Expeditionary Combat. Um, we have some 70 engagements going on throughout the city uh, with, with educators, with civilian business partners, uh, government, the community as a whole. It's, it's a it's a tremendous undertaking. It's, it's significant engagement. And, and I, I think, um, you know, every time I see our sailors engage uh, with other people, um, I'm just reminded about how special of a service we are. Now you mentioned the Navy Band. We've seen a lot of that band in our St. Patrick's Day parades throughout the years. But this is only the second time that you've come to do Navy Week in Savannah. Why Savannah? It's important for us to, to outreach all communities. Um, some communities, you know, you, you can look at fleet concentration areas, Norfolk, San Diego, uh, enormous Navy presence. I mean, largely the community knows who we are. Um, looking at communities that maybe don't have as much interaction with the Navy as a service becomes particularly important. Um, and not only that, it's, it's an opportunity to showcase um, what we bring to the table and, and not only what we bring to the table but how important is community members coming to us in terms of future work opportunities and things like that. So it's a segment of the population that we don't normally have a, a big presence but it's an important presence mm -hmm. and so uh, this, this engagement with the Navy Office of Community Outreach is, is a significant effort to get the word out. <coughs> Born and raised in Orlando. Born, uh, believe it or not, in Wisconsin. Stop it! Yeah, that's true. I'm a okay. cheesehead. Uh, <laughs> but but primarily raised in Orlando. My okay. uh, my father was a uh, was an engineer, and we, we moved there when I was very young, um, and and I grew up there. Went to college there. Went to UCF, and then I've been in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta's my home now. You have to say Atlanta. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah right. Um, <laughs> Been here since uh, mid '90s, yes. and um, certainly had some service with the Navy interspersed since then. But um, but that's home now. So I was going to ask you, what is it that attracted you to the Navy and the work that you do? The opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I have been um, fortunate enough um, to have leaders above me that saw something and gave me an opportunity and there was there was never a y you can't do this or you can't do that it was hey i i need you to consider doing something and, and so um 
my, my career path has been a, a little unorthodox, um, but I think what hallmarks it is just uh, a robust menu of opportunities uh, uh, across the, just the, the gamut in the Navy. And, and again, it's, it speaks to uh, the diversity in the Navy in terms of uh, jobs, skill sets, opportunities. It's, um, it's a pretty diverse organization and there's a niche um, for everyone. Speaking of opportunities, you are now tasked with overseeing the Navy's healthcare system overhaul. <laughs> what has prepared you for this role? Yeah, so it, it's interesting, and, and, and I have some I have some, some civilian experience in in um, the business of medicine. Um, I happen to be the surgeon, or I was the Surgeon General's um, action officer, so to speak, for that effort largely his initiative and in his guidance um, and I would tell you that the team at the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery has done the lion's share of work. Um, I, I think uh, like the Navy as, a, as an organization as a whole, um, reorganizing um, and focusing on what is important for our military health care system, for our beneficiaries, veterans, and, and our current service members we have that requirement and responsibility, and then we also have the same for our four deployed naval forces and fleet marine forces to provide world-class care in austere environments. And so um, I, I was fortunate enough, again, to be given that opportunity. Um, and I happen to have a background, both military and civilian, that was um, well-suited for that effort. Okay, this is my final question because you started in 1997, correct? Yes, ma'am. You have about three more years before you reach that 30-year yes, milestone. What's next for you? Um, more <laughs> opportunities. I, um, I, I, I run several businesses on the civilian side, and um, so that, that's a passion of mine. I mean, I, I've been in the, the healthcare business for many years, um, but interestingly enough, um, what I will miss when my time comes to the end and the Navy is the engagement in leading, um, having influence and impact. And so I see myself at some point uh, being able to influence whether that's the youth or whether that's a civilian organization. I'm not sure where I will land, um, but that is something that's very important to me. So you need to continue to do that because you already are. You already are impacting it's, so many people's uh, lives. It, it is an honor to be able to have impact and influence and to serve. I, th I think at the end of the day, it's, it's the sense of service that I enjoy the most in any capacity that I can do that. If I happen to be the right person to do that at the right time, then, then I would be interested for sure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being in Savannah. Thank we you. It's a you. pleasure to be here. Thank you so much.